students, as you can well imagine, having all of these videos that I put on YouTube in which I solve, well, the vast majority of our problem set questions for you where you can watch the videos has, well, somewhat expectedly taken its draw on our class attendance. Ooh. As a result, from this point forward, I am going to continue, of course, making the movies, but I'm going to try and pull back a little bit on how many problems that I solve in them and allow you guys to do much more on your own as well as ask me more inquiries about them in class. Hopefully that will increase your motivation to actually come. Okay, with that said, we're going to begin today's lecture of Chapter 20's coverage of electrochemistry with a hilarious scumbag teacher of the day. Teacher gives you a test. Doesn't grade it until you take the next one. Ha <laughs> ha! With that said, after today's presentation, or series of presentations from Chapter 20, you guys should be able to do each of the following things. First, determine atoms' individual oxidation numbers, or oxidation states. Second, determine which element is oxidized and which one is reduced in an oxidation reduction or redox reaction. Third, know that the element that gets oxidized in a redox reaction is called the reductant, while the element that gets reduced is called the oxidant. Fourth, balance redox equations by using the half reaction approach for both acidic and basic conditions. And fifth, know how a voltaic or galvanic cell works and be able to draw and describe its components. That's the lineup. Let's get started. In this chapter, we're going to learn how batteries work. And believe it or not, continual research is still going on to make batteries better. Smaller, longer lasting, easier to charge, more powerful, more environmentally benign, and so forth. Before we talk about batteries, though, we have to first talk about redox reactions. I realize that this might seem like a topic that has nothing to do with batteries. Please be patient, though. I promise you that by the end of this video series, you'll see exactly how redox reactions and batteries are intimately interrelated. Now, you might remember back in Chapter 4, to which I'll link here, we talked about reactions in which electrons are transferred from one substance to another. Such reactions are called oxidation reduction reactions, also known as redox reactions. In order to understand electrochemistry, we really have to first review this concept of oxidation reduction or redox reactions. Are you ready then? Here's the review. Now, I've learned two easy mnemonics for remembering how to distinguish between oxidations and reductions. The first one is Leo the Lion says GER, which stands for losing electrons is oxidation and gaining electrons is reduction. Separately, you can memorize this one if you prefer. Oil rig, oxidation is losing while reduction is gaining. Oh yeah. All right, now according to our book, before we can identify an oxidation reduction reaction, we must have a bookkeeping system. That is some way of keeping track of electrons gained by a substance being reduced and electrons being lost by the substance that gets oxidized. The concept of oxidation numbers, also called oxidation states, was devised as a way of doing this. So oxidation numbers are the bookkeeping system that we can use to determine what gets reduced and what gets oxidized in a redox reaction. So we're going to go ahead and review that. To determine an atom's oxidation number, we have to use the following rules. One, for any uncharged atom in its elemental form, that is an element that isn't bonded to any other kinds of elements except for itself, its oxidation number is zero. Examples include H2, O2, sodium, or P4. Once again, you can see in these examples, we sometimes have two or more elements bonded together, but all of those elements are the exact same kind of element bonded to each other. That is two H's, or two O's, or four P's, or a single N-A. See what I'm saying? If you have any of these substances all by themselves, no charge, their oxidation number, zero. Two. For monatomic ions, that is, you have a single atom that is an ion. It's got a charge of some sort. The oxidation number of that atom is equal to its charge. Examples include K+, plus, S2-, minus, Mg2+, plus, and Al3+. Plus. In each of these examples, you've got a single atom that has a charge. That is, it's a monatomic ion. Each of these would have an oxidation number of plus 1, minus 2, plus 2, or plus 3, respectively. That is equal to their individual charges. Three, nonmetals usually have negative oxidation numbers, although they can sometimes be positive. Here are some details on that. First, the oxidation number of oxygen is usually negative two, except for in peroxides. Peroxides are molecules where you have two oxygens bonded together. Now, that excludes O2. 
In O2, you just have elemental oxygen all by itself, no other atoms, no charge. That has an oxidation number of 0. But in peroxides, like hydrogen peroxide here, you've got a hydrogen on either side of two oxygens. The oxygens are bonded together. Those kinds of molecules, oxygen has an oxidation number of negative 1. Hopefully you're OK with that. Now secondly, the oxidation number of hydrogen is usually plus 1 when it's bonded to nonmetals and then negative 1 when it's bonded to metals. Next, the oxidation number of fluorine is negative 1 in all compounds. That is, except for F2, where fluorine's all by itself, no charge. Then it's an oxidation number of 0, just like everything else. Now, the other halogens, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, have oxygen numbers of negative 1 in most cases. When bonded to oxygen, however, they have positive oxidation states. Now, for the sake of review, I'm going to show you right here a periodic table that clearly shows, using colors, which elements are metals and which ones are nonmetals. You got it? Good. Let's continue then. Number four. The sum of the oxidation numbers of all atoms in a neutral compound is zero. The sum of oxidation numbers in a polyatomic ion is equal to the charge of that ion. What does that mean? <laughs> what it means is that for any compound, if you have the individual oxidation number of every element in that compound, all of those numbers have to add up to equal whatever the charge of the compound is. If that charge happens to be 0, you have to be able to add up all of the individual oxidation numbers of every element in that compound to be equal to 0. If it's something else, be it positive or negative, they all have to add up to equal that something else. Got it? OK, then. Let's take a look at a cool table which summarizes all of this kind of succinctly. To review them, an uncharged element not bonded to other elements, such as these examples, has an oxidation number of 0. In contrast, a monatomic ion, that is a single atom that has a charge, is always going to have an oxidation number equal to its charge. A nonmetal is usually negative. Oxygen is usually negative 2, except for in peroxides, like hydrogen peroxide, where it's negative 1. Hydrogen is plus 1 when bonded to nonmetals, and minus 1 when it's bonded to metals. Fluorine is always minus 1. Other halogens are usually minus 1, but can be positive if they're bonded to oxygen. And most importantly, the sum of the oxidation numbers of all atoms in a neutral compound is equal to 0. The sum of oxidation numbers of all the atoms in a compound that has other charge has to be equal to whatever that charge is. That's pretty much it in one glorious slide. Let's see if we can do some problems then. What is the oxidation number of bromine in this ion? Separately, what is the oxidation number of manganese in this ion? I'm going to do one of these for you, to which I'll post a link here for you to watch, and then I'll leave you to do the other on your own. All right then. Hopefully you have solidly at this point how to identify or determine the oxidation number of an atom in a compound, or by itself, or wherever. The reason is because you have to have that knowledge down very well to be able to do the next topic. That is, to be able to determine what substance is oxidized and what one is reduced in a redox reaction. So by determining individual elements' oxidation numbers, we can figure out what elements are oxidized, that is, which ones lose electrons, and what elements are reduced or gain electrons in redox reactions. To do this, we have to follow these steps. One, determine the oxidation number of every element in the chemical equation. Two. Any element whose oxidation numbers become more positive, going from reactants to products, have lost electrons and are therefore getting oxidized. Remember, Leo the lion says grr. Losing electrons is oxidation. Three, any elements whose oxidation numbers have become more negative going from reactants to products have gained electrons and are therefore reduced. Remember, Leo the lion says grr. Gaining electrons is reduction. Please note, by the way, that Substances that get oxidized, that is, that give up electrons in redox reactions, are called reducing agents or reductants. While elements or substances that get reduced, that is, they receive electrons, in a redox reaction are called oxidizing agents or oxidants. Now I'm going to give you a pile of problems, and I'll show you how to do maybe two of them, and then I'll let you do the others on your own. Are you ready? OK. Here. Which element is oxidized and which one is reduced in the following reactions? You can click the link here to a separate video in which I'll do a couple of these. Then I'll leave it up to you to do the rest on your own. With a solid command of that information, let's see if you guys can answer the question, which element is oxidized in this reaction? And separately, which element is reduced in this reaction? And separately, which substance is the reducing agent or reductant in the following reaction? Now, I'm not going to answer this for you. However, I will give you this hint. 
The thing that is the reducing agent is the thing that gets oxidized. So if you determine which substance contains the element that gets oxidized in this, that substance is the reducing agent or reductant. And now this one. Which substance is the oxidizing agent or oxidant in this reaction? Once again, what you have to do is determine which element gets reduced. Whichever element gets reduced is the thing that's stealing electrons from something else and is therefore oxidizing that something else. The element that gets reduced is the oxidant. And whatever substance that element belongs to on the reactant side of the equation is the oxidizing agent or oxidant. I'll let you do that on your own. That takes us to the end of this video. Please rest, recoup, and get excited and enthused for the next one in which I'll continue teaching you more about electrochemistry. Until next time, then, have an enjoyable rest of your day.